In this video, we're going to go over resonance structures. Resonance occurs when more than one Lewis structure is valid. For example, if you're trying to draw a Lewis structure of this molecule here, you can see that you can have that negative charge on the top oxygen or on the bottom right oxygen. Either is correct, and in fact, neither exactly explains what's going on with this molecule. The negative charge isn't on the top oxygen or on the bottom right oxygen. The negative charge is being evenly distributed over both. Left Lewis structure doesn't represent the actual structure of the molecule, and neither does right Lewis structure. In reality, the molecule exists as what we would refer to as a resonance hybrid, where top oxygen has a partial negative charge, or a delta minus, and the bottom right oxygen has a delta minus, or a buildup of negative charge. These dotted lines here represent a partial double bond. We don't really have a double bond between the carbon and the bottom oxygen, and we don't really have a double bond between the carbon and the top oxygen. We have something that's more like a bond and a half between the top oxygen, and a bond and a half between the bottom oxygen. We don't typically draw out the resonance hybrid, we typically just draw out the individual resonance forms, but we have to remember that the individual resonance forms are not quite the whole picture. One question that people commonly ask is, why can't we just take this structure and rotate it around? Aren't they just the same thing? In this particular case, they are equivalent, but you want to imagine the oxygens as being different. So this oxygen here that I'm coloring in red is this oxygen here. So that oxygen in one structure has the negative charge and in the other structure does not. So we want to think of those as being different because the charge is different on the different oxygens. And again, remember this isn't the true picture. Really, that negative charge is spread out over both and this is what the molecule really looks like. Another way to say that the negative charge is shared over both oxygens is to say that the charge is delocalized. A localized charge is a charge that is only on one atom. A delocalized charge is spread out over multiple atoms. Delocalized charges or delocalized electrons are more stable. Anytime we have resonance or delocalized electrons, this is a more stable system than the equivalent system that has a localized charge. So in my example here, we have two carbons and then an oxygen and two carbons and an oxygen, but the top one has an extra oxygen where the charge can then be delocalized across. This makes the top system much more stable than the bottom system. One way to think about resonance is to look at the electrostatic potential maps. These accurately reflect the resonance hybrid. For the structure shown here, we have a negative charge on the bottom right oxygen, and on the top oxygen we have no charge. Its resonance structure would have a negative charge on the top oxygen and no charge on the bottom oxygen. Okay, so this would be the resonance form. Thus the resonance hybrid would have a partial negative on both oxygens. And that's exactly what we see in this electrostatic potential map. Here's the hydrogen, black is the carbon, and these two red things are those two oxygens. You can see the red here indicating the buildup of negative charge is evenly spread out. It doesn't look like this oxygen has all the negative charge, and it doesn't look like this top oxygen has all the negative charge. That negative charge is spread out evenly over both oxygens. Let's go over some rules for drawing resonance structures. When we're moving electrons around to get to a different resonance structure, we can only move double bond electrons and lone pair electrons. If we're looking at the first example that we did here, we were essentially taking one of these lone pairs of electrons here and moving it down to become a double bond. And then we had to take a double bond over there and move it over here. We didn't move any of the electrons that were hanging out in the single bonds. When you're drawing resonance structures, it's okay to move lone pairs around. It's okay to move double bonds around. We do not move single bonds around. So that's our second rule, do not break single bonds. Also notice that in our resonance structures, the overall charge on the molecule does not change. If we look back at one of our previous examples, we had an overall formal charge of negative one over here, and we have an overall formal charge of negative one over here on the right. And then of course we have to remember that a carbon with four single bonds cannot have any more electrons. 
we have to obey bonding rules and not give a carbon any more than its octet. Also keep in mind that the best resonance structures we draw do not add charges. For example, if we have a negative charge in one structure, we can't go to the second structure and then have two negatives and a positive. That wouldn't be a very good resonance structure. Resonance structures don't necessarily need to be equivalent. The examples that I've given you so far have been, but they aren't all the time, and we will see some examples where that's definitely not the case. In this example, the double bonds are moving. You can see that this double bond over here is not in the same location as the structure on the right. You can think of these double bonds as sort of rotating or moving around the molecule. So essentially we're taking this double bond on the left and we're moving it over there. And then we're taking the green double bond and moving it down here. And then we're taking the blue double bond and moving it over. That's really essentially what we're doing when we're going from the left resonance structure to the one on the right. The resonance hybrid for this molecule then really has no double bonds and no single bonds, but every single bond is about a bond and a half in terms of length. The system that we're looking at is actually known as benzene or an aromatic ring. And it's very interesting because it doesn't have the system of single bonds and double bonds, but exists where every single carbon-carbon bond is equal, and those electrons from those double bonds are shared evenly over the whole system. You may also see this benzene ring represented as a six-membered ring with the circle, because essentially we don't have double bonds and single bonds. We're just sharing those electrons over the whole system. What I did in the previous example was use curved arrows to represent the flow of the electrons. And there's a very specific way to draw these curved arrows correctly. You have to always make sure that the curved arrows are coming from the pair of electrons that you are trying to move. And then you move them to a certain spot. Typically this is an electron acceptor. Maybe it's a positive charge. Maybe it's a new bond like we did in the previous example. And then in some cases we might be moving it to an empty p orbital. And we'll talk about what that means in a future lecture when we're using curved arrows to represent resonance, we're not gonna change the overall charge on the molecules. When we have one resonance structure that has an overall negative charge, the next resonance structure will also have an overall negative charge. Also remember that the products of these electron flow arrows must obey the rules for proper Lewis structures. So we can't move electrons over to a carbon and give it a fifth bond. Let's look at some more examples of how we can use curved arrows to show how resonance structures interconvert. So this is one of the examples that we were looking at earlier. And you can see that we have a negative charge and an oxygen, and we can move it up to this top oxygen. Well, what are we doing here? We're taking this, we're taking that red lone pair and using it to become that double bond there. Remember that one of our rules was that the products of electron flow arrows have to obey octet rules. When we move this red lone pair over here to form an oxygen carbon double bond, if we didn't have the second arrow up here moving electrons away from that carbon, we'd end up with too many. Let me show you what I mean. So let's pretend that we didn't have that top arrow there. Well, all we did was move red electrons, and that would be the product here of just that one arrow. Notice this carbon in the middle is super unhappy because it has five bonds. So this is a big no-no. We don't want to do this. Hopefully I've convinced you that we need that second arrow. This arrow is showing that this bond here is moving up to form that lone pair up there. Here's another example. In this case, we have a positive charge. So we're moving electrons towards that positive charge. The red double bond moves over there. In this example, notice that we move the electrons, the bond, not the positive charge. Electron flow arrows move electrons, not charges. The charge moved as a consequence of us moving those electrons. Over here, this carbon has a formal charge of plus one. Now it has four bonds and has a formal charge of zero. This carbon here has a formal charge of zero and when it lost these red electrons, now it has a formal charge of plus one. Here we have some more complicated examples. In this case, we have more than just a pair of resonance structures. Let's take a look at this one. You can see that 
this bond here is moving and becoming that bond over there. Let's draw that in. When we did that, now this carbon has a positive charge. It might be helpful to remember that there should be a hydrogen here that's not already drawn in. This carbon has one, two, three bonds, so the other bond has to be a hydrogen. Hopefully it's a little bit easier to see now why that carbon has a positive charge. It only has three bonds. Now let's move those electrons there on the left, and we're going to move them over here to become that bond there. The red electrons didn't move. And again, let's draw in our hydrogen. Remember that there's a hydrogen there, and it's still hanging out there. When you're drawing resonance structures with positive charges, notice that what we did is we pushed the electrons towards the positive charge. Also, notice that we used one arrow per structure, and this is typically what you want to do when you have a positive charge. Let's look at another example. In this case, notice that we have a negative charge, and that lone pair is not explicitly drawn in. I think it's going to be helpful to draw that in, so I'm going to put it right there, and removing that lone pair here to form a bond. When we do that, we have to move this other double bond, and that becomes the lone pair that's hanging out there where the negative charge is. Next, that green lone pair can become a bond, and then finally, we move blue lone pair up onto the carbon. We did a couple of things that were different here with the negative charge. One of the things that we did was we pushed the electrons from the negative charge because that was where the charge buildup was. We also used two arrows per structure, and that's typically what you want to do with negative charges. Sometimes we can use more, sometimes we can use less, but this is just a good rule of thumb where if you have a positive charge, you want to use one arrow per structure, and a negative charge is typically two arrows per structure. A couple of notes for drawing correct resonance arrows. If you're forming a bond, make sure the arrow is pointed towards the middle of that bond. Notice in both of these cases, the arrows in the middle of the bond not pointed towards the positive charge. Sapling in particular is going to get really cranky about this, so make sure that you're careful with the arrows when you're drawing resonance structures in sapling. The same thing is true when you're trying to indicate where the electrons are coming from. Make sure that the arrow is actually coming from the middle of the bond, not the nearby carbon. Or in the bottom case, make sure that you're coming from a lone pair, not the carbon. That concludes this video on resonance. We're going to go over lots of examples, and please be sure to ask if you have questions about anything we went over.